This month is Apple is still selling batteries for your iDevices, your iPhones, for $29. So if you have an older iPhone, an iPhone 6S, for example, or a 7, that's a little bit older and you want to get a battery, well, it's, you know, you can get them until the end of December for $29. After that, the price goes back up. They've been doing this all year. My, my mother-in-law just did hers. It's the right thing to do. If you have an older iPhone, get the battery replaced. $29 right now. What's the process? You go into the Apple store, you get an appointment with a genius, and then they replace it. Now, if you have any other problems with your phone, like a cracked screen or something like that, they're going to want to fix that before they'll replace your battery. Okay. So be aware of that. If you've got some other problem, you may not want to go in there. But if you, if you have a phone that's in good shape, just your battery is draining really, really fast, but it's older, take it in for 29 bucks, they replace it, and that's it. Okay. And your experience is they've been doing it while when you come while in? You wait, or, or, while you wait, or have you go around the corner and get coffee. But it's a 30-minute job for them, so it'll be done in an hour. It's, it's pretty fast. Cool. All right, anybody else has news items they want to share with uh, Ah, yeah. Sea Crane has a really good deal going on, or at least they did a week or so ago, uh, for a Bluetooth speaker. It's uh, normally around $60 or so, for 20 Oh, OK. And it's got, it's got an FM radio in it. Comes with a little SD card. It's really slick. Okay. Okay. You got one, and you. I got three of them. Oh. Okay. Where did you get it? It's a company called C Crane. They make high quality AM FM radios. So they have C C R A N E C R A N E. Yeah. Okay. C Crane. Okay. Anybody else have anything that they want? No. We're going to do that for previous. We'll do that in a little bit. How many you got, Ferris? Oh, okay. Just put it next to the donuts for now. <laughs> or, Betty, you'll you'll hold make, on. Hold on. make a little announcement. Oh, you want to? Okay, well, we'll do it right now. Make a little announcement. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm curious. How many of you uh, do your own taxes? <laughs> how many of you use software? Like uh, H&R Block or something oh, yeah. like that? Yeah. He does it. Oh, my word. He does it. He does it. <laughs> 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 Tell me a story. I, I do, I've done my own, so my own taxes for years. Uh, and I uh, order it from Amazon. And uh, it's about $37 for a you know, package like that. And, you know, sealed and all that good stuff. And uh, I get out there three days after I ordered it. And there's a package on, on the porch, and I pick it up. And it's heavy, you know. It's not that. It's this. What's this? 12, 12 copies of federal and state software. So 
I'm a pretty reasonable, it, uh, honest guy, so I call him up and I say, hey, if you guys will send me an envelope, prepaid postage, I'll, uh, I'll send you back 11 of these because I only order, ordered and bought one. <coughs> Hang on a minute. I got to talk to my supervisor. So he talks to his supervisor, comes back to me 10 minutes later, and uh, he says, uh, Ben, you're so honest, you could keep the other 11 copies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so half of them went to my woodworking club, which I just came from, and well, five of them are going to be. For here, I don't know how you want to disperse them. We're going to just well. Do you want to put them in as raffle items, or you want to just no, no. put them on the freebie put them on, on the freebie, freebie table? So the just donuts? put them next to the donuts. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to make you get up. Can we get up? Federal and state. <laughs> don't knock everybody down, Alan. What did you say? I said don't knock anybody down. <laughs> See, she's giving them out already. He wants one. Oh, one. Merry Christmas. Frisbee uh, style. Okay. Fire it in here. Thank you, sir. So now there's three. There's three. Anybody want one? He's casting them out. Going once, going twice. Up, oh, up. Oh, Kathy Wassenich. Okay. Thank you very much, by the way. That's very nice. Did you want one? Okay. okay, now there's two left, so one for her, and then... Now I've got two. <laughs> no, they don't have the same key code that mine has. They're all <laughs> so this isn't some Ukrainian-Russian Federation scam where if they use the software, the returns get put into your London bank account. Well, Jeff Bezos does this all the time. He's there for gross damage, $400 worth of software. Everybody say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, does anyone want to know why this happens? <clears throat> it's a story of Amazon Robotics. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. The the when when you are a packer, you do not pick the items anymore. Little Kiva robots come wheeling up with things, and it's got everything already in it. Okay. The pickers. Okay. Are other robots that are putting these things into various baskets. They're not very good at distinguishing between the one unit package and the multi unit package. And so when it, the basket comes to the packer, the packaging materials, they also do not select. That comes up automatically in another basket. They take the packaging materials, they lay it out, they then take the things that are in the basket. They do not look at the things in the basket. They just go with a scanner. Okay. And then they put it in the package, seal it up, and it goes off on its way. So the error is that the robots that put the stuff in register the H&R block as being a single unit, but it's actually a 12-pack or 25-pack. Or a 256-pack. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. How many of those gear things, Mr. Georges, how many of those Two gear dozen. Things? Two dozen. Two dozen of those gear things okay. showed up. Because it thought it was one. Yeah. yeah. So I, did the, I went through the same thing he did. Yeah. Called them back and they said, nah, give them away. Yeah. Or dumpster. Sometimes I've had people say, no, you really do need to throw that, you know. <laughs> okay. Does anybody else have any news items they want to share? Okay, we'll go back to Ken. About four books I Okay, so we just sent out of news that we're doing for sale and wanted. So you've got four books yeah. that you put over there? Okay. Did anybody else put anything else on the freebie table? I got well, we haven't done for sale yet. A power USB, <laughs> USB port over there, seven port USB hubs. Okay, USB one, one, two, two. 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 Oh, okay. Uh, is it powered or? Yeah, it's powered. Oh, comes okay. with a come wall. Okay, so it's a freebie. Yep. Okay. Now we'll do things that people are selling. Now normally we'd always start with these, <laughs> but. Great crew.
also does presentations for us, and I want to keep him sweet and happy. We'll let him go first. So I bought a new piece of hardware this last month. Yeah. Which I'm really excited about, but it uses different connectors. So if everybody remembers when I was speaking last month, or maybe it was the month before, I talked about my little bag with all my dongles in it. Yeah. Remember my little bag with all my dongles? Well, I don't need any of the dongles no more because this new hardware uses USB-C. So I have a whole mess of dongles. This is a bag full of dongles. And they all have a little price tag on them, but if anybody wants to look through them, there's, most of these are for lightning, for like uh, iPhones or, or iPads. Some of them are for uh, Macs, older version of Macs. They have a display port connector. So you're welcome to look through it. If you want them, buy them. If you don't, don't. Okay. But they're here. So they have to the break. If the break, you can see. It'll be laying here in my seat if anybody wants to look through it. Or his, or his lovely wife. She'll be more than happy to accept the money. I got so many of them. I, I just, <laughs> don't give the money to Elton. Yeah. 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 Okay. Are you done? Yeah. 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 And now the floor is yours. Still on the news. I was going to get up and talk about this on the news part. Oh, okay. Uh, there's, there's a company called um, Astropad. And they have a, a device that they've come out with called uh, Luna. And what it is, it's an extension of, it allow, allows for an extension of your desktop from, it was meant for like a MacBook Pro or any laptop. But it, it can create a extension of an iPad, so a desktop extension on your iPad of, of a Mac. And a guy finally figured it out, hey, I could plug this into a, an, an Apple Mini and have a touch screen display by using your iPad for it. And so that's, that's a possibility that's now out there with this device. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Okay. It is the best second screen. If you want to use your iPad as a second screen, it is the best implementation. Yeah. By far. So, so you, you now have Mac on a touch screen, and that's a lot of people have been crying for that. So, um, but in that in that vein, I've uh, got my uh, newer tech uh, mini stack, which is a uh, unpopulated external drive enclosure. A um, Still have the uh, Olympus uh, digital camera, uh, 12 megapixel, and then uh, my Jot Touch stylus, and a uh, if anybody has uh, Asian vehicles, uh, an OBD2 scanner, uh, and that's uh, this was like the 20 bucks, so nothing nothing expensive on that part. And then uh, in the in the future field. My daughter is looking to try to sell on her 13-inch MacBook Pro in sometime in the next couple of months. Um, so come talk to me if you're interested. And then in the same vein, uh, this is a first-generation 12-inch iPad Pro that uh, probably sometime after the first of the year I'd be looking to sell as well. So, so if I bought Rick Dongles now, and I bought your iPad Pro later on. Yeah. Would they work? Yeah, this is a light. So I, I could be I could be a presence presentation maestro. You could be a maestro. And I could be selling it by the piece. Or that. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have stuff they brought in, or that they're looking for things? Going once, saying twice. And then just a reminder, we are coming up uh, towards the end of this year. Uh, January is when we make all of those uh, wonderful uh, promises to ourselves that we're going to do experts. <coughs> One of them usually is that you're going to declutter some room or some part of your life. So, you know, uh, think about us. We, we're a good place for you to bring uh, extraneous cables that you don't know what they're for anymore or older pieces of equipment that you don't use anymore, you have, it adds no quality or value to your life, but it might add quality or value to someone else, or just having it removed from your life may improve the quality of your life. So you need to just keep those things in mind. Okay, so we've done news, we've done freebies, we've done wanted, we've done for sale.
Next thing would be help desk. Help desk. Anybody running any problems this month? Yeah, go for it. I had to call Apple the other day because we had trouble with the email. Okay. They all disappeared. Mm -hmm. And we found out it was that little button up on top called pull it down, uncheck something, and everything came back. Okay. But in the meantime, um, the person I talked to said make sure that the computer is updated and we are on High Sierra 10.3.1. Mm -hmm. She said the latest version was 10.14.1. When I went to check, mm -hmm. the update. Okay, 10.14 is Mojave. Oh, Mojave. You don't want that. Okay. okay. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. But when I checked um, yeah. um, for update, it had High Sierra was 12.02. It says recommended for High Sierra users. So that's a big jump, isn't it? Yeah, hold on a second. Let me just bring up about this now. Um, 1236 is the current latest version of High Sierra. Right. Twelve, you meant ten. I still remember. Ten, ten, yeah, ten. Oh, ten. Okay. Oh, so then we are current. We're at ten. Ten, thirteen, dot six. Yes, that's. No, that's what we have current. Okay. So we are up to date. Now. So where's the twelve coming? Twelve. It says the update was twelve point zero point two recommended for High Sierra. I thought that's a big. I think they were talking about Mojave. Okay. But it said recommended for High Sierra. Well, I to go off. The, the way I go about checking whether the machine needs updates, there's a, a, we're talking about a Macintosh computer. You launch the App Store. Now, the App Store is, typically it'll be in your dock. So, for example, over here, that blue circle with the letter A in it, that is the App Store. So you can launch it by going there. Or you can go to your Apple in the upper left-hand corner, and right underneath System Preferences, you can also launch the App Store from there. Then you wait a little bit. Okay. You wait a little bit until it finally finishes talking to the mothership. And then you click on not featured, not top charts, not categories, not purchase, but updates. And then you let it think a little bit. And it'll tell you if you have any updates. There's a reason, Bill. So in this case, it says no updates available. Go to the next one, the Safari updates, which she's looking at. Hmm? Safari oh. Oh, 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 maybe it was a Safari update. That's what she got. Oh. Ah. But the thing is, if your Safari needs to be updated, this will find it for you. Okay. okay. I'll have to look again at this. Okay. It's a recommended for yeah. High Sierra. You what will happen so. sometimes yeah, is they'll, they'll have an update, and it'll be a small little button that says more. And when you click that button, then it shows you that it's a security update and a Safari update and a something else update. Okay, so awesome. So there's your uh, 12, Safari is the 12.0.2. Yeah. Okay, so that should be updated. The other thing that I've seen happen, and I do not know what the mechanism is behind it, is it'll show me an update like Safari 12.01. I'll install the update. And then two weeks later, it'll come up again and tell me that it needs to be installed. I'm thinking they fixed something and they're sending it back out again. Okay. Okay. So okay. it must be the Safari then that we need the update. And okay. this update, the 12.13.6 update, that was installed yesterday, December 7th. That was the latest security. Okay. Ours was back in November. We yes. had an update. So you might want to check again. Okay. Mr. Thank Howell. You. Don't forget, if you do have Mojave, the system software update is in preferences now. I can't put it in the yes. oh. App Store only updates apps now in yeah. Mojave. Yes. Are you suggesting we do or do not update? Oh, 
My recommendation is that people not go to Mojave until they check to see that all of their software works with Mojave. Okay. I had a customer last week who was doing Apple support and they convinced him to update to Mojave. And then he discovered that Microsoft Office 2011 was not working. Okay because it's a 32-bit app, not a 64-bit app. He also discovered that he couldn't open his TurboTax in 2012, 2013, and 2014. Why you would need to open your TurboTax from those years, I do not know, but... It, it happens if you've made an error, and you got to adjust it. So yeah, you... okay. okay. Um, and I found that if you are if you are using TurboTax and you've gone to High Sierra or Mojave, if you go to the Intuit site, they do have a little software fix where the older versions will still launch. And it was something with Java that they had to do. Okay, let me go to Elf. Uh, just a quickie: the uh, you talked about the uh, Microsoft Office for Mac not working for 2011. Uh, because it's 32-bit. Is the uh, 2016 version 64-bit? Okay. Microsoft yes. Office 2016? I'm going to go to Shauna in the front row. Shauna, is it Microsoft Office 2016 or Microsoft Office 2019? 2016 came out as 32-bit and halfway in between its <coughs> releases upgraded to 64-bit. Okay. So Do I get the free upgrade? I bought the 2016. If you bought some Off the 2016 shelf. and you keep doing the updates to it, it will automatically update to 36 to 64-bit version. Thank you. You're welcome. Because I had someone tell me about this wonderful new version of Office, and they kept calling it Microsoft 2019. 2019 is also out, and that is 64-bit only. Okay. Is that PC only, or is that? No, it is both. Okay. Okay. So in other words. The same stuff that Microsoft did to me when they were doing Vista, and there were like 13 different flavors of Vista, and uh, all the flavors of 7 that was available, and fortunately Windows 10, I think there's only four versions? Three? Yeah, four versions. You've got Pro, not Pro, and it's either 32 bit or 64 bit. Okay. So they're doing the same thing with Office. They still haven't got a clear naming convention. So what do you recommend? If I was going to be buying a new Microsoft Office package today, and I've got PCs and Macs, should I be buying the Microsoft Office 2016 or the Microsoft Office 2019? If you're downloading, you may only have the choice for 2019 because you're in the Office 365 uh, uh, for home purchasing. Okay. So if I'm doing a non-subscription purchase, it's 2016 then still? Yeah, it could be either. Oh, okay. Amazon had that on sale, I think, yesterday for $100. Yeah. Okay. Bill. So Bill. Office 2011 Bill. won't work with Mojave. So Office, we'll Microsoft to Office yeah. 2011, whether it's home, home and student, or business, yeah. will not work with Mojave. So Correct. It does. Mm -hmm. But it does. It gives errors sure. though. It depends on what you're doing. Yeah. But every time you launch it, it will give you some yeah. kind of message. No. Okay. No, I've got to think about this because I have Okay. Now I'm going to go to the I have 2011. <laughs> I got <laughs> Mojave. Okay. The other day, I clicked on Word. It uh, came up and I used it. Okay. Okay. How come? Okay. You're telling me that 2011 doesn't work. I go by what the vendor tells me. <laughs> and so Apple has been telling people, if you go to Mojave, Microsoft Office 2011 isn't going to work. Microsoft says the same thing. I'll tell you, I, you fed me pizza, so if you tell me something, I'm more likely to believe you. <laughs> but the thing is, is it going to continue to work as they add, you know, and if you did an in-place upgrade to get to Mojave, it will launch, like I said, you may get errors depending on yeah. what features and functionality you're using of the apps, depending on how many in-place upgrades you've done previously can affect it. Um, 
And then when I did have 2011 on Mojave machine, I did get to the point where Word stopped giving me the errors, but Excel never did stop giving me the errors. PowerPoint never stopped giving me errors. Okay, and there's one other thing to consider, and that is, are they going to continue to have their update servers serve that particular version? So, you know, I have all of these valid Adobe, um, been doing Creative Cloud so long, I don't remember what the other ones were. Before we had Creative Cloud, Creative Suite, okay, CS, Adobe Creative Suite, Adobe Creative Suite 2, I've got a machine that's got a valid installation, works just fine. If I wanted to reinstall it, it isn't going to happen because the Adobe servers for that package are no longer on the internet. So that's the other way they get you that if you try and reinstall, they're going to say, oh, no, the servers aren't there anymore, and your updates aren't there anymore. Yeah. So just be aware that sometimes it's a good idea to keep that one old machine in the, you know, in the stable, because you know it's not connected to the internet, because it's too old to have a good web browser, but it's got a, a good copy of Office on it, you can, you know, do your word processing or your financials on it. Okay, moving right along. Yes, Dan. Uh, I think I told everybody about my woes of, of upgrading Photoshop and uh, Creative Suite. Um, turned out that I had a pirated license. Mm -hmm. um, but I've upgraded, <laughs> I, had, I had created a virtual kind of clone in uh, El Capitan. So I, through parallels, I can run El Capitan, and I can run Creative Suite. But it's Creative Suite has been functioning fine under High Sierra, and, and the error message that used to pop up is now gone. Okay. So I don't know. So, so this is, this is the, the drawbacks of having software that wants to immediately connect to the mothership over the internet and that wants to check your network to see if it's got multiple copies of itself from it. Uh, and it's just something that if you're in a, a, an enterprise environment, you just learn to, to deal with it. Yes? I was going to say, your software may not have been pirated. We had a situation where we had legitimate purchased CS6 licenses for our machines. All of a sudden it starts popping up saying they are not valid licenses. I had the license, I had the, the purchase order where we got, didn't matter when I called out, when I called them, Adobe, they did not care. I, it didn't matter that it, that we, where we had gotten it, our vendor, they did not care. Well, I, I Googled the company I bought it from and they were raided by the feds in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. That's usually an indication. Yeah. <laughs> What was the resolution in this situation? Show up on right your now, um, yeah. no, I'm paying right. monthly to show for, my, for, for two your copies, pictures. and oh, we have two here. copies that have never messed up. Mm -hmm. Why, I don't know. Same place, same license, no idea, um, you know, none. Right now, we're just kind of coasting along. Oh, they can decide because, in my as an independent contractor, I pay for my license. If they want to mm -hmm. put it out on other people, so they're going to have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. They don't do standalones anymore. Troubleshooting Adobe applications it's is a the true art you know, because the yeah. nothing is simple anymore. There, you've got things spread out on the Mac or PC. You're, dynamic load libraries, all sorts of hidden little bits that they've got there. And if one of them goes in, it's going to think it's not a valid copy. That's true. So. Or it just doesn't run that day and keeps on crashing <laughs> until it finally decides that it's happy with life again. Yeah. Even if you have the downloadable talks to the mother. Yeah. Uh, I have seen a chart when somebody has installed a third-party plugin that for some reason doesn't play well. And yet I've seen the same plugin on this installation work, and on this one, uh, the whole thing goes south. I know. So. 
the wonders of swimming in a sea of software. Okay. Did anybody else have anything they wanted to add in terms of? Larry had, was shaking his head, or were you shaking your finger at me? I'm not sure. Okay. So, this one real quick. Okay, so we did help desk, we've done previews, we've done one, we've done for sale, we've done news, we've done our greeting. Uh, I think we're ready to do raffle at this point. Topic today is getting more things done the Apple way using the Notes app and the Reminders app. And I'd ask that you turn off your cell phones or at least mute your mobile devices so we get the oops in the middle of it. Okay, so what are we going to cover? There's a meme. A method for staying in control. It's called GTD, getting things done. So we're going to discuss that briefly, very briefly, theory and method. And then we're going to talk about what kind of role Apple applications, the notes program and the reminders program can play in GTD. And then we're going to just do a hands-on demo. So you see, you know, how someone would produce this. Um, the reason why this stuff is important is very simple. As you get older, you lose focus. And when you're younger, you think you can just put things in your head and you'll remember, oh yeah, you know, buy milk before you come home, huh? Sure, not a problem. Buy milk, buy milk, buy milk. And then you come home and you don't get the milk and you're 20-something, you know. Well, when you're 65, then they start saying, you know, maybe we should get you tested for dementia. So the stuff that you can slide with in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, later on you can. Now, the worst thing about getting old is a feeling of losing control. Okay? Now, I know that as I get older, there's no way I can get around it. I will lose control of my life. But... I'm going to fight it to the last day. And I can use software and certain techniques to still be able to be a productive functioning person and not be brought in off the ball, if you will. Okay, so there's a fellow. His name is David Allen. And he came up with a process, if you will, a method for being productive and being stress-free. <clears throat> My focus is on the stress-free part more than on the productivity part. And his book is Getting Things Done. He's got a whole enterprise going. He's got multiple books about it. Uh, if you look up GTD on the internet, you'll find all sorts of stuff about it. It's a very successful productivity process. And as he says, it's possible for a person to have an overwhelming number of things to do and still function productively with a clear head and a positive sense of relaxed control. Okay. The first time I read it, I said, <laughs> I had used a variation of his process for a while. I went, oh, hey, it's working. It's helping. Do I have total control of the things in my life? No. No one does. But do I have a sense that at least I know what my obligations are? So then I can feel guilty about it, not having completed an obligation. Yes, but at least I know what the balls are that I'm supposed to be juggling. So let's just go into it real quick here. So the whole idea behind GTD, there's some concepts that I'm just going to use real quick. 
the one of the mind sweep, it's also called a brain dump, that's where you sit down, no distractions, and you just sort of empty your mind onto paper or some other trusted container, the things that you're supposed to be trying to handle. Okay? So that's called a mind dump or a mind sweep, brain dump or a mind sweep. The other thing that he uses is the term open loops, they're unfulfilled promises. Okay? You know, you're walking through your garage and you say to yourself, I need to clean out the garage. I need to declutter the garage. And you've been telling yourself the same thing for 30 years. Okay? That's an open loop. It doesn't seem like it's malicious, but in your brain, it's eating away at your sense of control and you're getting stressed out. Then we'll, we'll ignore this one, mind like water, but the idea basically is that in the same way that if I put my hand into a pool of water, the water responds perfectly to that change. If I take my hand out, it responds perfectly. That's the sort of clarity you're trying to get. If there's some Zen stuff involved, but I won't go into that. And then there's the thing that he calls context. So that's uh, a particular situational context where you can do certain types of actions. So for example, if you've got a list of people you're supposed to call and you're not, you don't have a phone, then you're out of context. You can't do those things even if you want to because you don't have it. If you've got stuff that you can only do with the computer but you don't have a computer at your hand right then, those things are out of context so you can't do them so you shouldn't be stressed out that you're not doing them. Okay, so there's a whole idea of context. And then topics. This is the one where people really, um, they, they don't organize up stuff. So the idea of topics, personal stuff, financial, health, house, work, kids, the idea of having that balance in your life, that you're, okay, and again, balance, control, flexibility, you know, there's all this end stuff going on. And then the other thing that he calls is the net, next action. What happens to many of us is we feel so overwhelmed going through a list of, oh, I got I got the kids come, we're hosting Christmas this year. So I, I, I got to get the rooms cleaned out, I got to do this, I got to do this, because we're going to be hosting the kids, we got to do this, got to do that. And you're just feeling overwhelmed where what you should be doing is saying, okay, what's the next action I should do right now? So what you're doing is you're changing dithering or worrying into actions. And what you find sometimes is that that thing that's bothering you is not actionable. It's not something you have control over. It's like, oh, I need to stop all this junk mail coming into my email box. Well. You have no control over the junk mail. Somebody else is sending it to you. All you can do is set up a filter, which is actionable. Okay, and then last but not least, cranking widgets. That's when you've done your brain dump, you've got a list of things, and you're knocking off the things that you can do in two minutes or less. That's called cranking widgets. And people don't do it because they think, they've been told, it's been pounded into a your time is valuable, and you should use your time only for the most important things. Well, sometimes that most important thing, like redo my estate plan, is not doable right then and there. But, hey, I got a messy desk. I can straighten this up, put this over here, put the tape. Oh, new tape in the tape dispenser, staples in the stapler. Okay, cranking widgets gets that little stuff out of the way, and then you can move on to the big stuff. So those are just some of the basic concepts and terms in GTD. So the rationale, why do you want to do this? Okay, so you've got open loops, they're unfulfilled promises to get something done. Okay. So, you know, I'm getting ready to go somewhere, and as I'm walking through the house, I go, oh, yeah, I've got that, that window pane. I need to clean that. Okay. Oh, that's right. Uh, I forgot to grind coffee for the coffee this morning. I don't have time for it now. But I'm putting all these things into my head. 
thinking that I'm going to remember them when I come back into that particular context of the kitchen or the garage or the work or at home or whatever. Well, guess what? Our brains can't hold all this stuff. You know how many things your brains can hold? Three. Three. That's why so many times when we say, you know, actions, you know, bump, 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 it's usually three. If you put a fourth thing in, what happens to one of those three? It falls out. Well, these open loops cause a psychic backlog. And psychic backlogs cause stress. Stress. Stress is bad. Stress is fear. Okay. But if they're open loops, you can't run away from them because they come with you because they're in your head. And stress causes us to become even more confused and unfocused and less productive. Okay. So, we don't want to be unfocused, we don't want to be stressed, we don't want to be afraid. So, what's the method? Getting things done method. It's got these five steps to it. Collect. So, you have, you set yourself down somewhere, quiet spot, nobody around. You don't do this for a half hour. You don't do it for 15 minutes. You just do it for five. Five minutes. Collect. What have I got to do? Just empty your brain. But how do you empty your brain? You put it either onto paper or into some sort of informational device. Okay. And it's got to be a trusted place. <clears throat> and they have to be a small number of trusted places. So if you're dumping your brain onto paper, and you do it in the kitchen, and you leave a bunch of notes on your kitchen. And then when you're sitting at the computer, you do a little bunch of, and you put the post-it notes up on the computer. And then when you're in your workshop, you do some more, and you got more scrap paper. That's not a trusted place, because you're not going to know where to look for what you need to be doing. So you need to have a small number of trusted places. Some of these things are already in your life. For example, if you have a landline and an answering machine, that's collecting information for you automatically. If you've got an email account, there's stuff automatically coming into it. It's a trusted place. Okay. What if you've got five email accounts? What's the problem there? Too many. Too many. So if you have multiple email accounts, I always recommend that instead of using webmail where you log in individually, you instead switch to an email client that can be logged into your Gmail and your AOL and your Yahoo and your uh, um, Overlook, uh, over, overlook? Yeah. Outlook, Outlook account where you've got one unified inbox that you can look at. Okay. So trusted places, that's an important concept. So then you collect it. Well, the next thing is you process the stuff. Okay, and I'm not going to go into too much detail on that, but basically you go, okay, is it something that's actionable by me? And can I do it in less than two minutes, or is it going to take more than two minutes, or is it a project? Okay, so you classify stuff down like that. If it's a two-minute thing and you got the piece of paper in front of you, you do it right then. If it's more than two minutes, <coughs> You then say, okay, what's it going to take to do this? And if it's a project, you then start out a separate place for the projects. Okay. You organize the things in the actions, in the context. So, phone calls, okay. Have all the list of who you're supposed to call together in one place. And you have it in the context. So, if you've got, uh, oh, let's see, um, you're sitting in the airport and you're waiting for you know, them to call the flight, and you got 15 minutes, hey, and i got a cell phone, hey, I'm in context, I've got a phone, I can be doing phone calls, or possibly email. Okay. Um, so you want to have them organized in the context, you know, if you're at home, if you're in uh, office, if you're at the school, if you're, you know, wherever. And then review, this is the important one. At least once a week, 
you look at all of those trusted containers and you review what got done, what didn't get done, because sometimes, glory, hallelujah, it went away. You don't have to do it. Somebody else picked up the load, somebody else did it, or it didn't become important anymore. Okay. And then you drop those off. And then last but not least is the do, selecting the next action from the list and repeat until stop. So these guys, collecting, processing, organizing, and reviewing, you can do that with software. The do part, that's, that's on us. Okay. Now, there are software packages. OmniFocus, which we've had in the raffle more than once, is a package that you can use to do the getting things done uh, procedure, meaning if you will. Uh, the package that I use is called Things, T-H-I-N-G-S, but it costs money. It's a $50 <coughs> package. And there's others that are out there that will let you do these sorts of things. What we're going to do is we're going to take two programs that you already have on your Mac, and if, if you've got a smartphone, for example, it's on your smartphone. If you've got tablets, you know, iPads, they're on the iPads. It's called Notes, and it's called, oh, excuse me. Is it right there? Yeah, I'm, okay, yeah, okay. Notes and Reminders. And using those, you can use it to collect open loops, you know. So you've got Notes open on your phone, and you're putting in things. And you can have folders in notes. So you could have a folder that says, hey, when I'm on the phone, you know, I'm near the phone. Or if I'm shopping, that's the big one for me. I hate that. When I go out, I've got a list of errands to do, and then I get home, and it's, oh, did you return the stuff at Kohl's? Yeah. Yeah. And you were right there, you know. But you didn't know. Okay. So you can use these things to help collect, process, organize, and review. <clears throat> Think about that. You know, if you're putting it in on the Mac, it's also on your smartphone, because these apps talk to each other. And if you're on an iPad, you can be put in. So that's really lovely, because when you collect it, it's three different devices, the smartphone, the iPad, and the Mac. But in terms of being a trusted container, it's one. It's one trusted container. So now at this point, if you got any questions. Okay. What if you got a lot of projects? <clears throat> if you've got a lot of projects, okay, especially stuff where you uh, designate people to handle things, you know, you're you're uh, deferring stuff and you've got to manage those people, then the uh, paid packages are usually better. But, I mean, what do you call a lot of projects? For me, if I've got more than a thousand things that are multi-step, each one of those would be a project. If i got more than a thousand projects, then I'm using full-blown uh, project <coughs> software, like Microsoft Project or a Gantt chart or whatever. Uh, for most of us, <coughs> it isn't so much we have that many projects, it's that it's so varied that you don't know how to <coughs> sort of nail the jelly to the tree, if you will. And using a reminders program and a notes program will get you in a better place. Okay. Yeah. One Ken. of the things that I do mentally about getting things done, if I have a lot of different things, is I go back to my childhood and I think of grade school and high school, and that was a list of things that you did during the day that was orchestrated by your teachers. You go from art to literature to that, and each one was a compartment of five things. Yeah. And it was amazing what you could, just with a change of mind, what you could accomplish if you were able to change your mind and not bring the baggage from the other thing. Yeah. To it. Just one of the advantages of doing it this way is you start to take what I call is an amorphous blob of stuff. When we're thinking about what we're doing, what we got to get done, it's just this amorphous blob of stuff. Using this sort of a process, 
you break it down into things that you can yes. actually do. Yes. So one of the keys for this is when you're putting things in, in a notes or a reminders, you're not saying, uh, you know, achieve world peace. <laughs> what yeah. you're doing is you're saying, oh, call Trump. Call Kim Sung Yun. Call, you're breaking it out into actions that you can do. It, it's, in a sense, it's no different than uh, painting a picture or uh, building a house. Each one you do a step at a time. If you do it that way, break yeah. it up, it's, if you took, if you tried to do it all at once, you'd lose your mind. Yeah. But if you break it up, and yeah. you see the process, then it's... And there's cool. some things that they've done with the notes program and with the reminders program that uh, facilitate that sort of thing. An example would be, you can now have checklists in your notes program. Mm. So you've got the little circle in front. If you click on the circle, you know you did it. So you have the list of things that got to get done. Boom, 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 boom. People love to be able to choose what they're going to do next. But if it's just this amorphous, uh, I'm feeling like I'm not getting stuff done, Christmas is coming, the holidays are coming, but you don't have the list. You know, it's it's one of the nice things about the app system is, for instance, like with emails, he's driving crazy, I'm getting all these emails. Mm -hmm. all these, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking about ways to approach it. And I would pick one of the people that was taking emails and then I could select, bring them all up, all the ones in, in that category, and then I would go back in time and quickly delete them. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And made it like a game and made it easier. It made more yeah. productive. Yeah. Again, very key point that you make, if you can make it fun. Yeah. When you start cranking widgets, oh, it is fun. You're just banging yeah. it out. That's what makes work great and it's yeah. cool great if it can be fun. Now I'm going to go to Elton. Okay. Uh, what is the difference between the notes and the reminders, which one do you use for those different functions you're talking about? Okay. How do they operate separately? What's the difference? Okay. If it's a shopping list, okay, so I've, I've created a checklist in notes, and I've got a shopping list, okay, I put that sort of stuff in notes. If it's something like, oh, you're, you've got two different residences, and there's trash is a Trash day is a different day in the two different resonances. You can use the reminders program to remind you to take out the trash, where it goes, oh, it's the, always the Tuesday morning of the week. So every Tuesday morning, it'll send you a reminder. But you can say, if I'm in Centerville, if I'm in Mandan, North Dakota. Does, does it remind you? Does the reminders you can program have it send where you? The reminders program looks to see where you are and when it is and tells you the appropriate reminders. So it if does, you're in North Dakota, it'll remind you about taking the trash out on Thursday. You don't Thursday. have to set it up. You just put the, just type in the reminder and it'll automatically I'll show you when we do reminders, Good. what okay. buttons you click. All right. Okay, but those are the basic differences. <clears throat> If it's something that's like a table, you know, oh, library cards, okay. You know, sometimes I don't have my library card with so my wife takes the book out for me, okay. So now I want to re I want to renew the book, but now I don't know her <coughs> library card. So this would be important information, reference type information. You have it in the notes app. And I make a little table, and, you know, the name, and then their library card number next to it. Yeah, Del. Reminders would be perfect for birthdays and anniversaries. It's in, it's randomized active. That kind of stuff is already handled in the Apple software system by the calendar program, where you can put into someone's contact information what their birthday is, including wedding anniversaries. <clears throat> that saved me more than once. <laughs> okay. Bill, what if you don't sync devices? Okay, if you don't sync devices, then you have to get in the habit of going to that particular device, that particular, you know, to review your items. And what I would do in that case is print out, you know, your list for the day. 
phone calls, you got to make, and the phone number for the person is on the list. Boom, 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 boom. So that's if you don't sync stuff. It also means that if you're going to be collecting when you're not at that device, you have to resort back to old technology, like three by five cards in the pocket with a pen, and you, and then when you get back home, you take the three by five cards out and you put them into the trusted device. So you're doing it twice. So. Right. It's once on the card, and then you destroy the card once it's in the computer. Okay. Because the worst thing is to set up a system and you find you're constantly shuffling papers more than once. If you're doing GTD correctly, you touch a piece of paper once. Okay. And you say, is it actionable? Yes or no. If it's not actionable, is it reference material? In which case you file it. Can be in a computer or in some other sort of device, or is it something that I should refer it to somebody else? I love that. <laughs> Take care of that. Return this stuff yourself to Coles. Okay. All right. So, just in case, you know, sometimes people don't go through all the programs that are on their their Mac or their uh, smartphone or their iPad. This is what the Notes app looks like, okay? And with the Notes app, it makes it easy to capture a thought or save something for later. And with cloud services, you can access your note on any device. With the Apple structure, if you have notes in a different email system, like AOL or Yahoo or uh, Bing, you, know, uh, you, you can have them actually but the notes automatically look at those. I don't recommend that because I've seen what happens when somebody's using a Google calendar and they're using the Apple calendar and they're using the AOL calendar and they're never quite sure what calendar they put the thing on. Yeah, I don't recommend that. Again, remember, limited number of trusted devices, trusted containers for putting your stuff in. Um, the other thing that's neat about the Notes app is with that share menu, if I'm in Safari web browser and I'm on a website and I go, oh, I want to save this for later on, if I go to the share menu, I can say save it in Notes. And I'll say, whoop, that is Notes without me having to open Notes and copy and paste all this to do it. Okay. Like you're in Safari or something. Yeah, Firefox uh, may or may not, depends on how you have your computer services set up, but if you're using an Apple program, it's going to work. You're in your Photos program, and you want, you've got a photo, and you want to put it in the notes for some reason. Like, okay, you're at the store, and you go, oh, that's really neat, and you take a picture of it on your iPhone, so it's in Photos. Well, when you get home, say, hey, let's take it and put it into notes. Because then if it's in notes, you can email it to other people, you can do all sorts of neat stuff. And periodically when you do your review, you can say, oh yeah, I forgot, the toilet paper at Sam's Club is not as good as the toilet paper at Costco. That's not true. Because I took the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a member of both, that's not true. <laughs> it depends. Oh, it depends. God. It's Sarah. like shopping. How many of you ever shopped for clothing and <laughs> Marshalls for clothing, they never have the same stock. You know, so it's sort of like your deer hunting. If you see it, you like it, buy it. Don't come back next week and expect it to be yours. Um, you can compose text notes in this, so it can have you know fancy, rich text in it. You can make checklists, and you can do tables in it. Okay, so that's the notes app. And then this is the icon for reminders. And you can reuse reminders to keep track of everything you have to do, get or see. And you can set reminders that are time and or location dependent. Okay. So, yeah. Can you do those with, with things that are intermittent? Uh, and not, not like the, always the second Saturday of the month or something. Uh, that's one time the second Saturday, next time it's the fourth Saturday. Then you're going to end up having to, they're not recurring, you just even put them in a separate. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, typically, the way I end up doing it is I got an email announcement. I'm in Apple Mail, and I say, hey, save it to notes or save it to reminders. You know, and then, boop, puts it in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, movable fees sir, can be problematic. Okay, so with that said, ta -da, demo time. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. And let me do an escape here to get out of it, and now let me do a quit. All right, so down here on my menu bar, excuse me, on my dock, I'm going to launch notes first. Now, when you start out with notes, all you'll see is just this thing here that says, I'm going to make this full screen, by the way. All you'll see is just this thing that says notes. And I have this particular computer account set up so it does not sync with anything else. So this is a true demo copy. I don't want it syncing with my real notes elsewhere. Otherwise, I'll be, yeah, okay. So, so what we're going to do is we're just going to walk through these little buttons up here on the top. Okay, so the first one is right next to what I call the stoplight. The red, yellow, and green buttons, I call that the stoplight. There's a little box. If you click on it, it'll show you your different folders for notes. So let's create a new folder. So down here, if I've got folders being shown, I click at the bottom on new folder. It says, okay, it created new folder. What am I going to call it? I'm going to call it shopping. Okay, I'm going to call another one, new folder, at phone. Okay, so what I've done, I've just created contacts. If I'm in a store, I'm going to look at my shopping folder. If I've got some free time and I got a cell phone, I got a phone, you know, crazy man with phone, I want to start calling people. Okay, so these are folders that are going to have those notes within them. The one that's next to it, what it does is it brings up uh, a media selection, if you will. So what are the things you can put into notes? Well, you can put in photos and videos. You can put in sketches. You can put in scans, maps, websites, audio. OK, how about that? And you can have documents. So, so this is a way where you go, I don't remember what I named it. I don't remember what I called it. All I remember is it was a voice memo. Oh, voice memo. Hey, click on audio. It's going to show you all the notes that are voice audios. But you go, ah, I don't remember what I called it. I was taking pictures of various uh, faucets at uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and Menards. Oh, I was taking pictures. OK, so I'm going to look and I'm going to click and say, hey, show me the photos and the videos. Okay, obviously that's not a faucet, those are penguins. Okay, and it will show you a list of what notes have those sorts of things in them. Okay, so next to that, so we're on the third one now. Okay, let me go up here where I'm in. Let me unclick that button. Uh, I'm going to go down to where I've got uh, sample notes. So that third button is a trash can. What do you want to bet the trash can does? You got a note and you want to throw it away. Okay, so let's see. I've got three notes here. I'm going to select the one that's called the to-do list, and I'm going to hit the trash can. What notes does is it puts it into a new folder called recently deleted. Okay, so if we're like Jimmy Carter, and you know, we threw... I've told you folks that story before. Why we have delete is a two-stage process in email. President Carter was the was the one of the was the first president to be using email, and he didn't understand that hitting that delete button really deleted it, and that caused problems for Ham Jordan, because Hamilton Jordan, because there's this Federal Records Retention Act. Okay. 
And so he actually called Bill Gates and said, hey, we got a problem with this email system that we're using. We need it so that it like puts it into a trash can but doesn't delete it immediately. Because sometimes the boss gets a little overwhelmed and he deletes it all without reading it. Just, okay. So anyway, the thing is, if you hit that delete button, it puts it into a recently deleted folder that you can then review later on. Like somebody says, oh, it's handled. You don't need to be looking at the specifications for that engine wing nacelle because we, we, we're going to go with you know this particular contractor. And then they call you up two weeks later and they say, uh, oops, you know that congressional probe got started about bribery and such, so it's back open again. Okay. So let's go on to our back up to notes here. So that third button was the trash can. Now this fourth button is Creative Note. If I click it, it comes up and creates a thing called New Note. And then if I type in the area here on the right, and I call it Grand Plan for World Domination. Okay. What happens is the title of the note, which was new note, becomes whatever that first line of the note was. So something that's important to remember about Apple Notes, the first line of the note is what you're going to see as the title for it. Okay, now, so we got this thing going here. Uh, and I'm going to just real quick come in here and say, hey, you know, let's make that a title title so it's a little bit bigger. And then right underneath it, I want to put uh, a table. So now I've got a table, and we're going to give it through, let's see, how many columns do we want here? Dun, 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 dun. Excuse me here. Let me click there. I want to add a row below. So now I've got three rows. And if I click on that little widget there, I never could quite. I'm not going to focus on that. So, so now I've got a table in there. That was this uh, sixth button that I clicked. And then on, next to it, the seventh button, I'm going to click that. That says, hey, checklist. So I'm going to do item one. And if I hit return, it automatically gives me another little button that I can click if it's done. I can do item two. <coughs> On, 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 on. So think of like shopping lists, you know. They say, okay, I want you to go to Kroger, here's the shopping list. Okay, they email it to you or they, whatever, you manually put it in. Well, you would take this grand plan for world domination, let's make it Kroger. <laughs> list for party. And then where would I put that that particular note? Oh, I drag that note into shopping. So now if I click on my shopping folder, I've got my shopping list for Kroger, Home Depot, Cabela's. <coughs> I'm trying to think of where else I hang out. Menards, Harbor Freight. All this time we had Harbor Freight. Okay. Well, you know, if you if those how many of you do Harbor Freight? Okay, you got those coupons, right? And you, and you know you get this free thing if you buy something. Okay. Well, you know, keeping track of all that stuff's a little tough. It's a lot easier if you've got that coupon flying circular in notes and you're carrying it around with you all the time. Because sometimes they run out of circulars. Okay, now... Let's do some other stuff here real quick. Uh, let's bounce out of notes for a minute. Let's do quit notes. Um, yeah, let me do this real quick. Let me go bounce back into notes real quick. If I've got a file that's on my computer, I can go to notes and I can go to the file menu and I can say import to notes. <coughs> And then I can point it to a particular document 
and put it into notes. So I'm like, let's see. Oh, what have I got over here? There's a nice text file. Okay, I'll bring that in. Okay, I just imported the, uh, I'm going to say yes, imported to notes. So I just brought in the raffle list. And I just put it into notes. Let's do something else here. Let's launch Safari. Um, somebody give me a place to go. It's a, a web browser. Bill, quick question. I'm using notes on my iPad, but they don't seem to have all those little icons that you have on your computer. What version of iOS do you have? Be one. Okay. You have all those capabilities, but because the tablets have a smaller screen, they're going to be hidden most of the time. Okay. So what I would recommend you do is go to your Books app, and what you want to do is go to the iBook store. It's lonely, I'm not connected. Well, that's okay. Don't worry. Try yeah, okay. But anyway, the thing is, if you go into the books program and you go to the, uh, the bookstore, there you can download the user manual for iOS 12 to your iPad or Mac OS, whatever, to your Mac. Actually, I download them to all my devices because sometimes, you know, my wife will say, hey, how do you do this? And you're sitting in the car, and you don't have that iMac in front of you, but I can bring up, you know, iMac Essentials and, and books and say, oh, yeah, well, what you do is this. So anyway, just real quick here. Okay, well, that's fine. I just, I didn't know whether... Yeah, yeah. I there's going to be, there's the gonna be some different yeah. interfaces, differences. Okay. Um, but if you go to the Apple website, <clears throat> let me make sure I am connected to the. Okay, now I'm connected. So if I do uh, notes, Apple support, and just do a quick search for that, there's this. Apple support article called Use Notes on Your iPhone, iPad, and iPod. And it'll go into dictation services where you can tell Siri, hey Siri, do you know how to talk to Siri to create it? Could you include that on the, the notes that you sent out to us? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm in, I'm in Safari. I'm on something and I go, ooh, hey, I want to keep this for later on. I click on my shared menu. And then I say, oh, hey, I can add it to notes. And then it says, okay, what do you want to call this? And I'm going to say, I don't want to add any other text. I want to just do it the way it is, so just save it. And now if I go back over to notes, I've got a note that is basically a web link. And if I click on that, it takes me to the... Yes, Bill. Can you make a checklist on the phone? Yeah, in notes. Find anywhere in the notes. It's down below. Yeah. Um, here, let me bring it up here, so and it's to create a new note, note manually. Uh, you're in notes, or ask Siri to open. For a home screen, open notes, tap the small little right, uh, that little icon to uh, create the, the note. Tap the little box with the pen in. Okay, I gotta keep rolling here, folks. So conceptually, just put into your head that doing this stuff on iOS is gonna be a little bit different from Mac OS. Yeah. Okay, so okay. what I've done so far is I've put pictures, I can put pictures into this, I can put scans, I can be looking at a web page and put it into notes by just going to that shared menu. So now, let's tell Safari to quit. The two devices have to be, have to be sick, right? Correct. Yeah. And where you're handling all that is if you're in system preferences and you're clicking on iCloud. And okay, now this is not an iCloud account. Let me switch over to one that is real quick. Da, 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 da. Yeah. 
switch over real quick. Oh, come on, quick, quick, quick. What's the password for the uh, Geo MC Mac app? You know? Yeah, it's temporarily saving all the stuff that was in the one account. And this was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you get in a bad idea, is there a fast way out of it or just, no. you just have to so, sit there? Yeah, we're going to do just a quick restart. Okay. 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 So the, okay. the thing to keep in mind is that when you go into your system preferences or your settings, depending on what kind of device you're in, there's this thing called iCloud. And it says, oh, do you want to sync email accounts? Do you want to sync Safari bookmarks? Do you want to sync notes? Do you want to sync reminders? You know, click on those, and then go to your other device and click on the same things. And then it will synchronize. Um, but then again, some people only want to use the one device where they keep everything. Let me get down here just real quick. So we're going to move on to uh, reminders now. We're going to say, hey, we don't care. We don't care that we close <coughs> one day. So let's go to the reminders program. Okay, now, reminders is a little more stark. You know, you're going like, okay, I've got this, I've got my, head, uh, my stoplight, the red, yellow, and green, and it says reminders, and there's a plus mark, and there's two different buttons at the bottom. One says scheduled, one says reminders. Things that you put into reminders do not have to have a specific time set to them. If they do, they're going to show up under schedule. Okay, so me, I don't like the uh, bare bones approach, so I go into my view menu and I say, show me my sidebar and show me the calendar. And now I've got everything turned on. I'm going to go enter into full screen. Okay, I'm going to create a reminder. I click on the plus. It creates a little dot that I would click on if the reminder is done, and then I type what it is. So it's going to be take out the trash. Okay. Now, it's important that when you're putting things in as a reminder that you use action words. Call, take, pick up, drop. Purge. You want to always start with an action word, and you're going to know which ones work best for you. Now, once I've gotten that little bit of stuff in there, take out the trash, this little bit of eye over here all the way on the right shows up, and if I click on that, now I can start telling the reminders program what this reminder is going to be. So I'm going to start with on a day. So it says take out the trash, remind me, and I click on a day. So it's giving me, by default, today at the time that we have. So what I'm going to do is down here where it says repeat and it says none, I'm going to say, hey, every week, and it's going to say, okay, and I'm going to say, you know, whether I want it never to end or when I want it to end. Isn't that sim similar in Kellen? Yeah. The difference is, okay, it's easier to do it in here. Calendars, <clears throat> according to Apple, you should only use for actual appointments, not reminders. So in this case, I'm going to change it to be the fourth and I'm going to change it, instead of being 12 p.m., I'm going to make it 5 a.m. And I got it so it's repeat, and I'm going to say done. Oh, I'm going to add a location. Enter the location, 207 Brad Street. There we go, 207 Brad Street Road. So if I'm at home in Centerville, 5 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, It'll remind me, you know, the day before that I got this thing to do because they come by at six. And it gives you a map. Yeah, yeah. The map is so you can control the radius around that particular location. 
you. All right. Let's say you're working in the E ring of the Pentagon. Okay, the Pentagon is one address, but it's sort of a big building, so you could make it so it's your office. If I'm in my office, it'll remind me to do the duty reports. If I'm in somebody else's office, it'll remind me to do their duty reports, you know, assuming they're higher rank, whatever. Okay, let's do another one here. How Can you this? add a person to that if that's your kid's job to take out the trash? Can it being him instead of me? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> The, one of the differences between, between reminders and lists, they've added a feature to lists where you can have people associated with the list. So for example, if it's, uh, okay, I'm going to use my kids. Okay, they're, adult, they're, they're grown, they're adults, they don't live with me anymore, but we're going to pretend they're back home again. Okay, I can make it so that the First Tuesday of every month, Andrew takes out the trash. Right. Okay, but I'd have it in the list, and then the list would, they get a reminder from the list. There's another app called List? Excuse me, I, I misspoke. Notes, notes. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't even, it's been so long since we've been uh, empty nesters, I forgot all about the job jars. And managing yeah. internal conflict in the family by assigning chores. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. 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 So I have it right now. I have it set up in the calendar because I can put it on there in the calendar. Okay. My, and does that work? Yeah, but I mean, if I'm supposed to be that, I'm supposed to be. But if this is the way to do it. Now, be aware that mileage will vary depending on what version of Mac OS you're running what version of iOS you're running. So I'm showing you the latest and greatest. Well, I think that. We so I'll say today. Yeah. Um, how do you get a reminder? How do I get a reminder? That's why you get most It'll pop up in your notifications. And you can tell it, you know, how you want to be notified. You know, remind it how many days ahead of, you know, before or whatever. Typically, what will happen is you so bring up notifications. So let me, let me, let me quick chime you. until you fix it, or how do, how do you know you're being reminded? You get these things that pop up on your screen, usually when you're in the middle of watching a Netflix movie that says, <laughs> be sure to prepare for your customer call with you know, uh, X, Y, and Z. So you have to be looking at your computer screen to get the reminder. Well, but the thing is, if you've got multiple devices and you're carrying the phone with you, the phone's going to be, you know, vibrating. No, I find that yeah. Okay. But again, remember the true secret to a getting things done procedure that works is you're always doing that weekly review. You're looking at what you did, which makes you feel good. And you're looking at what's coming up. Okay. Yes? So, so you make this reminder for taking out the trash or whatever. And or, or, you know, before I... Oh, oh, let me, let me bring that up again. He yells at you or whatever. Yeah, let me click on this. Let me bring that up. Uh, locations can be... You can set it for when I arrive at that location or when I'm leaving that location. So sometimes what I'll do if I'm visiting someone... I'll make a little reminder of stuff I'm supposed to do before I leave there. Right. And then as I'm getting ready to leave, I'm in the car, I'm getting ready to leave, and it's going, hey, right, don't you know, hey, but you should then be doing if this. you clicked that you did it, so you took out the trash Yeah. Week. Oh, if I took out the trash. Will it show up again next week? Okay, if I took out the trash, I click the little button, and it comes off of the reminder list, and it ought to, this is a repeating reminder, so it automatically generates that, a That was my question. I didn't want it to go away if I clicked that it was completed. It'll come back from next week. I want it to come back from next week because I always have trash. <laughs> um, okay. You said I'm trying to, there's, there's a way to show all of the reminders even when they're completed. Sure. So, sure. Sometimes if you're, I, I don't do this anymore, but if you're a boss, and you have people that report to you, 
sometimes what's more important isn't what they're going to do, but just you can say something got done. You know, you get trapped in the hallway and they say, did this get done? And you go, um, 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 that's always bad. Right. You know, and you go, ah, yep, got done, blah, 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 blah. And they complained about how tough it was to get it done. <laughs> We'll go to just real okay. One, I've used reminders for quite a while now, and one thing I've noticed, and I don't know whether it started with High Sierra or with Mojave, but I primarily, primarily use it from my phone. And if I have a repeating item that mm -hmm. repeats from day to day to day, mm -hmm. and I accomplish it today, instead of jumping the next item to the next day, tomorrow, mm -hmm. it might jump ahead two or three days. So I've gotten in the habit of every time I accomplish something, I have to scroll down and see where it moved it to for the next occurrence, just to make sure that it's tomorrow and not yeah. two or three days from now. It never seems to happen on the computer version. Mm -hmm. So every time I go and, and, and make the change on the computer version, it gets reflected accurately on my iOS devices. Yeah. But in the opposite, it causes the problem, yeah. going from the iOS this is one of the reasons why I tend, if I'm doing calendar entries, I'm doing notes, I'm doing reminders, uh, I'm doing other project stuff, I'll do it on a Mac OS device because I've gotten burned if I put it into a smartphone. You know, it says, yeah, I took it, but then when I check later on on the big calendar at home on the iMac, it's not there. And I go, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah, but when you're out and about, you're not carrying your MacBook yeah. Pro with you. You've so got your phone or your phone. What iPad. I've learned to do is, let's say, okay, I've got my morning list of Love. stuff that's supposed to get done. Morning list. Okay. I put it into notes, and I go clunk, 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 and then first thing, at, or last thing at the end of the day, I uncheck those items, and I look at that same list the next day. See, you're just making more work for yourself that we shouldn't have to do. There's a bug in the system of some kind, and Apple should fix it and not make us do other things to try and keep from getting in trouble. But my rule of thumb is if a process is not reliable, it's not trusted, then I go to a different process. Well, yeah. So uh, I myself personally use a program called Things. Yeah, that I'm looking at very that. Good job it's 10 bucks for the iOS version. Of Correct. It. It's 50 for the Mac OS version. And you're saying it's worth it? Um, it's. <laughs> I'm not going to recommend a particular uh, productivity package to someone until we have the conversation of what they need to do and what are the disadvantages that stuff doesn't get done. So if someone's doing mission critical work, uh, there, I would give them a different recommendation than if it's just, you know, okay, make coffee, take your pills, put up the bird seed. Take your pills or yeah. eye drops, those can be mission critical for the individual. Okay, these are non prescription stuff. So it's, if, whether, if I take them at breakfast or I take them at lunch, no harm, no fault. If it's something like um, uh, another relative's uh, blood pressure medication that has to be taken at a particular time and only if, it's one of these if, then, then, then type things. And so I use IFTTT for that particular person. So if they take their blood pressure and they put in the number and there's a script and it automatically comes up with what they're supposed to do after that. Yes, Bill. Uh, when I asked a little bit ago about why I couldn't find any of that at the bottom of my screen, mm -hmm. I mean, she had the same problem over mm -hmm. here. Found out what you need to do is if you create a new folder, then it has all those things available oh, to you. I'm but, sorry, it's, but, I'm but if you don't create yeah. a new folder, you're operating yeah. off of apparently what we put in under the old yeah. operating system. Yeah. Just like if you haven't deleted something, you won't see the recently deleted folder. And if you take that out, you throw away the things that are in recently deleted, recently deleted disappears, and then you go like, wait, what? I thought maybe somebody else was having the same problem. Yeah. This is I'm what I them. call false parsimony. They are, they're working with such small screens that they're saying, oh, 
I need to have the absolute minimum number of elements on the screen at all times. So I'm going to hide those scroll bars. I'm going to hide all the choices. You have to do four fingers and lift your left elbow, and then that menu appears. This I call false parsimony. It is not helping you be productive. It's better to just make yourself a new folder and a whole new world of production. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we're like right at the tail end here. So, if you are truly interested in productivity, uh, I would recommend that you look at the writings of David Allen or just do a Google, excuse me, a DuckDuckGo search. <laughs> I'm going to continue to push DuckDuckGo as your search engine for GTD or productivity or names like Merlin Man. Uh, for some people, electronics, this is not the way to go. There are comparable GTD systems that are based on what is called the hipster system. It's all three by five index cards. Okay, so there's a, a whole subgroup of people that you'll see with their three by five index cards. This is similar to the cult of the day planner cult. I don't know if you've ever seen that particular species out there. They come in the small day planner the larger D planner, and the, oh my god, they're carrying the Bible with the no, look at counts, D planners. Um, did you mention that you can lock notes? Ah, I did not. You can lock notes. You can also have notes that only reside on the device that do not get synced. Okay. So in some cases, you may not want to have something. Uh, let's say you've got... Uh, your um, credit card numbers and your PIN numbers. You know, you want it on your phone and you don't want it synced to another device, no way, no how, and you also want to have it locked. So that's a way to do that. There's also a three by five notebook that you could just use a pencil and write all these lists down and take it to Kroger's. Uh -huh. Yes, you could. Okay. Yes, you could. And then it'll be done because you'll scrunch up the list and show it in the draft. That is true. So what I'm showing is a possible yeah. method for implementing getting things done. The original David Allen getting things done was all paper and inboxes. Okay. Yeah, you got you got your when you do your mind dump, your brain dump, you just write the paper, throw it into a box. You do your weekly review, you take the papers from the box, and bump, 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 bump. You want to go paperless, you can just take an ink pen and write it on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is true, too. But some of these correspond to uh, books on anti-stress. You know, it's like, and like I was first told when I was having those problems, was that you're not... If you're starting out in your car, you're not. There's no reason getting stressed and now because you yeah. still have time. So don't get stressed until you're already there, and then you're late. Okay. And so it's <laughs> these little things that people are getting ready to leave. I want to make sure you hear this from my mouth before you leave. The major cause of stress is uncertainty. Yeah. So if something, it's that. It's that. Feeling that, oh, there's something that I'm supposed to be doing and I don't know what it is, I've forgotten it, whatever. So anything you can do that imposes a sense of order, that you've got yeah. control over, you know where to go look to see what you're supposed to do today, that will relieve the stress that can kill you.